Today I am going to be speaking about something that nobody wants to speak about. We are not aware of it, but we don't want to get educated. We don't know if there is a clear right or if it's a clear wrong. We don't know like black or white, we cannot differentiate it. Like when it comes to something like smoking, we all know that it is detrimental to our health and should not be consumed at all. But what about other substances, substances that stimulate our central nervous system? Today I am going to be speaking about CNS stimulants and depressants. To find out more about this, they are used every single day. So we wanted to go to the hospital and see how it affected people's life every single day. It is still treated as a taboo topic and there is a lot of misinformation that is being spread about these substances. Let me show you a study which was done in NIH which showed that 85.6% of the US population consume alcohol above the age of 18. So, what are the benefits, what are the risks? Even in the medical community, there is still a lot of disagreement regarding to this topic. So, we want to make sure that you find out more about CNS stimulants and depressants today. Okay, let us get more educated about alcohol. The alcohol which we consume is ethanol. What happens when you drink alcohol? It gets absorbed in our stomach. It enters each and every cell of our body. But how does it exit our body? It exits our body when we excrete as urination or it can also leave when we sweat out or it can also be excited through our lungs when we exhale and this is the way the police will catch you when you drink and drive so that is how a breath analyzer works and that is how you get caught for drinking and driving but 90% of it the majority of the alcohol that you consume is broken down by the liver a normal healthy human liver can break down one drink of alcohol per one hour what is one drink one glass of beer or one small glass of wine or 40 ml of alcohol that is one glass of this process cannot be sped up by the liver. Whatever you do, this is going to be the pace of the liver. Even if you consume more liquor, if it's a party tonight and you are drinking more, you are drinking more than one drink per hour, you consume non-stop. What happens is, alcohol accumulates in your body and your blood alcohol level uh, increases and this will be the fate of your liver. So after a night of heavy drinking, even if you take caffeine, even if you take cold showers, you are only going to get a false sense of sobriety. You are not going to affect the blood alcohol level. And the only way that the liver will be able to make you sober again is if you give it enough time. Only time will make you sober. Okay. To find out more about these CNS stimulants, we have done our research and we have gone to the Government General Hospital, Mahabun Nagar. We wanted to meet the patients in hand and we wanted to see how these CNS stimulants and depressants were affecting their daily life. We went to the psychiatry department and we have met a patient. A patient who was suffering from insomnia, sleeplessness, depression, social anxiety and we wanted to find out more about the various drugs that the person was using. There were various uh, methodologies that he was using to cope up with his problems. But we wanted to find out more. So we sat down with the psychiatry department staff and we discussed more about the CNS stimulants and how they were affecting the everyday life of patients. We found out about a study which was published in the Lancet Medical Journal which said that the overall risks of alcohol outweigh the benefits. But this is a very vague statement. There are three problems with this. The first one being there were 694 data sources from 195 countries which is a lot. The second one being they have accumulated both the acute as well as chronic effects of alcohol. The third one is they have put all this data and accumulated it into a mathematical problem which is not the right way to do it. Why? Let me tell you why. The countries which have the highest life expectancy also have high alcohol consumption. So there is not a direct relationship between mortality and alcohol consumption in western societies where people drink mildly tend to have a longer and healthier lives compared to people compared to people uh, who abstain from drinking or people who binge drink. So mild drinking has, we have a relationship here right here which is a graph which is a shaped curve which this J shaped graph is between mortality and alcohol consumption rate. The people who drink mildly, they tend to have a less risk of coronary artery disease, ischemic stroke, diabetes, Alzheimer's. It's not a clear thing. So, so I want to end this with a quote of Dr. Richard Harding. The quote says that alcohol acts as both a tonic as well as a toxic. It all depends on the dose and the pattern of drinking.